According to the NFPA research report titled U.S. Experience with Sprinklers, which analyzes data from 2017 to 2021, sprinkler systems operated effectively in 89% of fires where conditions were sufficient to activate them. In addition to saving lives, they significantly reduce property damage, cutting losses by up to two-thirds depending on the type of occupancy. However, the report also highlights a critical vulnerability. In nearly 61% of cases where sprinklers failed to operate, the system had been accidentally shut off. While poor maintenance or damage components can contribute to failure, the leading cause remains the shutoff of control valves, making them essential to the reliability of any water-based fire protection system. Common scenarios include the main control valve being closed, a zone control valve being shut off, and an underground supply valve being closed. In this video, we'll explore what a control valve is and highlight its key features based on the NFPA 13 standard. You'll learn why these valves are critical in fire protection systems and how their design supports safety and functionality. In the next video, we'll dive into the different types of control valves and review the inspection, testing, and maintenance requirements, ensuring compliance with NFPA 25 and best practices for long-term system reliability. Control valves are defined as a valve that controls water to fire sprinklers. In other words, closing a control valve will prevent water from reaching fire sprinklers. The minimum working pressure for system components is established as 175 pounds per square inch. When working pressures are expected to exceed this value, special components such as extra heavy valves must be used. Listed valves that can accommodate higher pressures are currently available. Control valves must be a listed indicating valve or a valve with a listed indicating assembly. There are a few types of listed indicating valves that you can see in the figures and in the following part of the video, we'll learn more about their functions and characteristics in detail. According to NFPA 13, control valves must have three main characteristics. One, valve closure time, not less than five seconds. Two, indication and three, supervision. Coming up, we'll explore each of these key features. Listed indicating control valves shall not be closed in less than five seconds when operated at maximum possible speed from the fully open position. To prevent a phenomenon known as water hammer, control valves must close slowly, typically no faster than five seconds. Water hammer occurs when the flow of water is stopped abruptly, creating a pressure surge that sounds like knocking in the pipes. This sudden spike can exceed the system's design pressure, potentially damaging components or causing leaks. By allowing the valve to close gradually, the system absorbs the pressure change more smoothly, reducing the risk of costly failures. Control valves used in fire protection systems are required to be of the indicating type. That means you can tell at a glance whether the valve is open or closed. So what's the purpose of using indicating type control valves? 1. To identify whether a valve is open or closed just by looking at it. 2. To prevent accidental or malicious closure. And 3. To facilitate inspection, testing, and maintenance. Indicating valves such as OS and Y PIV or butterfly valves are designed to show at a glance whether they're open or closed. This visibility is crucial for fire departments, maintenance crews, and inspectors who need to assess system status quickly and accurately. These valves also help deter tampering. When paired with supervisory switches, any unauthorized movement from the open position triggers an alert, making interference immediately noticeable. According to NFPA 25, control valves must be inspected regularly. Indicating valves streamline this process by allowing fast visual confirmation during inspection, testing, and maintenance without the need to excavate or disassemble equipment. 
Butterfly valves typically feature a brightly colored external indicator that shows the orientation of the disc. This visual marker enables operators to determine at a glance whether the valve is in the open or closed position. The OSNY valve has a threaded stem that pokes out of the valve when the valve is open. If you can see the valve stem poking out of the valve, then you know that the valve is open. The indicator in PIV valves functions through the visual indicator window that shows the valve's position open or shut in real time. However, there is one exception, a non-indicating valve, such as an underground gate valve installed with an approved roadway box and a T-wrench, may be permitted, but only if it is accepted by the AHJ. Sprinkler systems include multiple control and isolation valves. These valves allow specific sections of the system to be shut down for maintenance, testing, or repair work while keeping the rest of the system active. This flexibility is essential, but it also introduces risk. Valves may remain closed after work is completed, or they may be shut off accidentally or even intentionally, rendering parts of the system inoperative. That's why sprinkler supervision is so important. Supervision refers to the monitoring of a sprinkler system status. According to NFPA 13, any valve that controls water flow to a portion of the system must be both open and supervised. NFPA 13 outlines four approved methods for supervising control and isolation valves. One, a central station, proprietary or remote station signaling service. Two, a local signaling service that triggers an audible alarm at a constantly attended location. Three, valves locked in the correct position. Four, valves placed within fenced enclosures under the owner's control, sealed in the open position, and inspected weekly as part of an approved procedure. The first two options are electrical. In these cases, a switch is connected to the valve so that when the valve is closed, it sends a signal to a constantly attended location. The person monitoring that location is then required to notify the building owner, indicating that someone may be tampering with the sprinkler system. In situations where electrical supervision is not in place, all valves should be secured with locks or seals approved by the authority having jurisdiction. The third and fourth option are considered mechanical means of supervision. Seals may be marked to indicate the responsible organization and must be attached in a way that prevents valve operation without breaking the seal. Key distribution should be tightly controlled and limited to personnel directly responsible for the fire protection system. Them. Any of the previously mentioned supervision methods are acceptable under NFPA 13 for all valves, except in two specific cases, floor control valves in high-rise buildings and valves that control flow to sprinklers in circulating closed-loop systems. In these cases, NFPA 13 requires that the valves be electrically supervised. Importantly, multiple valves should never be locked together. Each valve must be individually secured. Padlocks and chains are especially effective in areas where valves are vulnerable to tampering. Note that there is one exception to the supervision requirements. NFPA 13 does not require supervision for underground gate valves equipped with a roadway box. In this illustration, you can see a non-rising stem underground gate valve accessed through a road box and operated using a road key. NFPA 13 mandates that specific components and conditions of a sprinkler system must be supervised. This is a critical measure to reduce the risk of system impairment. To meet this requirement, supervisory devices are strategically installed to monitor the operational status of automatic sprinkler systems. Their role is vital. They help ensure the system remains active, responsive, and ready to perform when needed most. As we've discussed earlier, even a planned or accidental closure of a control valve can render the entire sprinkler system inoperative. That's why NFPA 13 requires these valves to be supervised. It's not optional, it's essential. While the standard permits several methods of valve supervision, one of the most advanced and reliable options is the use of an electronically monitored tamper switch. 
This device immediately triggers an alarm at a constantly attended location, ensuring any unauthorized or unintended valve operation is detected and addressed without delay. A tamper switch is designed to detect when a control valve has been closed, whether intentionally or accidentally, and immediately alert building staff. This early warning is critical to maintaining the integrity of the sprinkler system. For electrically supervised valves, standard requires that a distinctive signal be sent when the valve begins to move from its normal position. This must occur either within the first two revolutions of the hand wheel or once the valve stem has shifted one-fifth of its travel distance. Take extra care when mounting the switch. It must be positioned in a way that does not interfere with the valve's normal operation. Improper placement can obstruct movement or cause malfunction, so precise installation is critical. The installation of this type of supervisory device is specifically addressed by NFPA 72.